Well guys, this is a video I am actually looking forward to making. And it is gonna be a one year, 15,000 mile review on my 2022 Ram 2500. I've really enjoyed owning this truck, to be quite honest with you guys. Not too many things that I dislike about it, although there are just a real, real short list of things that I'm just a little bit annoyed with on this truck. But for the most part, it's been great, and I'm gonna get into the details on this thing and try to give you my most honest and fair review and opinion on the truck after just well 11 and a half months technically uh two and a half three weeks from now will be my actual one year anniversary but it's pretty close and i've got about fifteen thousand miles on it which is about the average mileage uh, somebody would throw in a vehicle in a year so i figured it's close enough and um, i put enough miles on the truck in a year to give an honest review on this thing. And before we get much further into this video, do not forget that we are in the process of giving away a beautiful 2005 59 Cummins. Thanks so much to everybody that got entered during the dual entry. What is dual entry? Just to be brief, it is where a giveaway is ending and a giveaway is starting and the days overlap and it gives you the opportunity to get entered for two trucks at the same time. That period is closed and now exclusive 50 times bonus entries are live for that 05 third gen, beautiful 59 Cummins, gorgeous truck. If you want to enter to win it you can do so at lmpgear.com link in the description or just type it in it should pop up at the top of the search results and anything you order on the website gets you entered to win right now so i'm going to do this review on this truck and guys keep in mind i've owned the truck for one almost one full year now i have owned other trucks i've got a second gen dodge my wife owns a third gen i've had one of these before in the past i had a limited 3500 back when they very first came out it was actually the first limited 3500 to be sold in the state of indiana back when i lived there at the time and um, I got the truck right as it was coming off the trailer and loved it. And we ended up giving that truck away to somebody a long time ago. And I stayed away from buying another truck until I found this one. The reason I did that is because after I got rid of that truck, I did not realize, and I don't think anybody saw it coming, COVID-19 hit. And then all of a sudden they were shutting down factories and manufacturing stuff. And the prices went through the flipping roof. I mean, that truck, if I would have held on to it, I could have made $20,000 on that truck had I kept it and then just sold it later on. At the time, I could get a brand new limited dually 3500. I mean, gorgeous fully loaded truck for 70 grand. Now, that's what you pay for this truck right here. Um, step down in trim level, step down in everything. I mean, prices are just crazy. Uh, not the same market it used to be, but I did wait until I found a really good deal on a new truck to buy this truck. And for this truck, um, I feel like I got a really good price. I've mentioned it in previous videos. Let's just say the sticker was 85 and I didn't pay anywhere near that. In fact, I paid about 20K under sticker for the truck. That was a good aspect of the deal. And then they threw me in a lifetime warranty because it was their last 2022 model and I just got it last year. And they were like, we need to sell the thing. We've got a ton of 24 showing up and this is the last 22 here. We don't have any 23s like we just we need the truck gone and so they made me a screaming deal and i couldn't pass it up but that is what you get for being patient and not spending 120 grand on one of these things back when nobody had them and everybody was desperate to, to buy a truck and get a new one and nobody had them but um those days thankfully are slowly going away and now inventory is back and prices have kind of relaxed a little bit the first thing i want to touch on in this truck that i like and that i really love is how quiet the interior is i mean this thing is quiet do you hear that no you don't because it's so quiet i mean this thing absolutely love it the sound system in this truck is amazing no complaints it sounds really good it is an alpine system everything in the interior for the most part has held up great i haven't had any issues with it i did get these full floor liners that go literally over the whole hump of the middle seat here area for the front and the rear of the truck because I do use this truck for traveling and hunting a lot. And as you can see the dirt, I did not want to pile all that dirt onto the carpets of this thing. And so this has come in really handy, but for the interior itself, in terms of sound and functions and issues, I have not had any issues with the interior. The only thing that I have had that's a little bit annoying, you see the seatbelt reminder there. Well, if you're driving this thing, there's no rhyme or reason. It is such a minor detail. I'm not like complaining about it. Like, oh, I wouldn't buy this truck again because of that. Not one of those types of things, but it will just like, just, you know, backing out of the garage or coming down the yard, 
it like glitches and like flashes on and off on the actual screen here and it like the chime will kick in and kick out and kick in and kick out there's no like sequence to it it's just like freaks out if the truck's moving and you're not buckled when you're parked it doesn't matter um it just has a little light there but it doesn't go crazy uh, in terms of this i've got one complaint on this that i have no idea why it does it there's some pop-up that happens every time i get in the truck and it's like your satellite you connect box whatever needs service and it's done that since i got it brand new and i don't know why i've talked to the dealer about it i've been like why does it do that they're like well you can bring it in we can try to reset it and everything else but it, it doesn't actually like affect anything with the truck it's just i don't know it's some something stupid but i've never taken it in to get messed with it because they kind of made it sound like it was pointless anyway it doesn't really affect anything just when you first get in the truck you just have to hit x and close the thing and then it goes y but just one of those small things in terms of a feature that i really love we'll stay on the interior for this this thing has mirror dimmer which is really nice i don't hardly ever use it but it does have it it has your rear view camera options so you can actually like if you're driving down the road you want to check on whatever you're hauling on your trailer or you want to check some straps or you want to back up obviously if your truck's in park or if you're driving whatever you can use that camera anytime which is really nice and it's actually pretty high resolution and i'm i'm really happy with it the other thing is it's got a bed lowering feature it comes in handy and i've used that a lot of times you might have in your mind thinking how often would you really use a bed lowering feature but it has come in handy a lot for example this trailer i've got over here i have got it set to where like for the most part I can just back up that thing and then I can just hit bed lowering and it'll lower the truck enough to where like the jack will land on the block and then it'll just unhook the trailer and I can just pull away. Obviously, I still have to unplug my chain and wiring and stuff. But then the nice thing is when I go to hook it back up, hit my rear view camera, back on up to the trailer, get it to line up with the ball and then just go back here and then hit the button to turn off bed lowering mode and it'll raise the bed back up and i can hook right up to the trailer i don't have to like get in and out and like crank the thing a hundred times and then miss it by an inch or something stupid you know not a big deal with a small trailer but if you had a bigger trailer it would definitely be more helpful or if you had an in-bed camera and a gooseneck could be helpful just so you can get that thing at least hooked up to where you don't have to get in and out and try to line up your ball and like wiggle things around i mean just just a great feature that has definitely come in handy for me and another thing i want to touch on in regards to that bed lowering feature you can only get that feature if you have the ram air suspension and this truck does have that there's mixed feelings on it just like there's mixed feelings on a four link there's pros and cons to all those things but i love the ram air when i'm towing and hauling another pickup truck behind me like when i've got to go out of state and i got to pick up another diesel truck and the thing weighs you know seven eight thousand pounds sitting on that trailer this thing rides so smooth. And as soon as I hook that thing up and I pull a truck up on that trailer, this thing will just beep, And it has its own onboard air because I've had the thing completely turned off, trucks not running. I will load up a truck and it will sense that there's a new load and the bed will just go from like squatting like this and just pop it right back up. Like it's really, it's really fancy. It's one of those like little luxury things that you don't need in a truck, but it's, it's nice to have. And then every time I go anywhere, I'm sitting at a fuel station, anywhere, the truck's just, it's always level, which is just really nice. And it does help with your load. Like, cause you know, it's one of those things where if you way overloaded it, the air thing and self-leveling might not work well. But when you're using the truck for its intended purposes within this, the specifications that you're allowed to, it's kind of nice knowing that you can always keep that load level if you want. Now we're gonna step on the outside of this thing and I'm gonna go over some of my likes and dislikes about the truck in other regards. Power folding mirrors, awesome, especially going in and out of my garage. I can just hit a button, they fold in, hit a button, they fold out. And in parking lots, tight areas, I don't have to get out and jump on either side or have my wife run over, smack the mirrors closed, whatever on her side. Like that's a very nice feature, absolutely love it. One small thing that has always kind of bugged me and I don't know why it's like this. There's a spot on this side of the truck. Like it looks like I don't even know, like, because if you kind of wipe it, it kind of, like, it kind of goes away. I don't even know. It's one of these things, like, it kind of goes away when you wipe on it. But when I got the truck brand new, it had this. And I was like, what in the world? What's going on? And then I just took a microfiber with a little bit of, like, cleaning solution, and it was gone. And then, like, once it totally dried out, it came back out the next day, it was there again. It's like, it looks like a little, like, a couple of little scratch marks. Um always been there just kind of weird i don't understand it doesn't necessarily have anything to do with the make and model of the truck 
but just kind of a weird thing that I've noticed. In terms of a thing that I dislike, I have serviced this truck and I've done everything on it. I did the air box and the air filter. I did the front fuel filter, the rear fuel filter. I did the oil on this thing. Everything for the most part is simple enough. There's nothing about it that's like real hard. The only thing I complain about just a little bit oil drain plug and all that stuff all that stuff's normal for any of these trucks even the old ones it's in the same place the only thing that kind of bugs me is a when you have to drain the fuel for the front fuel thing there's no like you could add one probably easy enough but there's no like down spout or drain spout that like with a clear hose or something that goes down to get the fuel drain away from anything else under the truck so when you go to like empty the fuel filter in the front to open the valve it just sprays diesel fuel all over everything that's right below it not a big deal but it just makes things a little bit messy because then like you can set a pan but it doesn't really catch much because it just like flicks and splashes everywhere down underneath and then when you get under the rear end of the truck same thing with the rear of the truck so i have done the fuel filter in this truck of course already and when you undo that fuel filter cap and you go to drain that thing with that valve on the side, which is nice. And you can just slide a hose over it to not make a mess. Of course, you can you can add those things. That's fine. If you don't have that on hand, you go to drain this thing. It's just directly lined up with the drive shaft. And so, again, you can go get a clear hose. You can go get stuff. And you can add stuff to the truck that was not there from factory to make it a cleaner process. But it does just drip everywhere then. And kind of make a mess so a little bit a little bit annoying because you go and you think take your thing and i put a pan under here and i'm you know undoing that valve and diesel fuel just smacked this it smacked all over splashed on the exhaust i mean it just ran literally everywhere um and then it just it just made a mess um not a big deal but just a small inconvenience is all and just thought i would note that but other than the location and the draining situations on those two small fuel filter you know gripes those real small things not a big deal this truck overall was still pretty much built around ease of maintenance and ease of use and so i'm not going to complain about in terms of like being able to access that rear fuel filter it's super easy to get to because the only thing back there is a drive shaft and there's nothing too close to where like you can't get your arms up in there put a wrench on it pop it off so that's nice even the one under the hood like you know it's pretty much in the same spot as like even a 12 valve i think a 24 valve even you know some of those other trucks that i've owned in the past the fuel filter is kind of in the same spot or even a 7.3 that my dad had it's in a similar spot so on that driver's side more towards the back center of the driver's side and you just pop a wrench on there pull it off pull your filter out put your new one in after you've already drained out all the bad sediment in that bowl and then you just prime the truck and get it to go back in. Now, the priming on this thing is super slick. All you do, don't put your foot on the brake. You just push the start button and then click it one more time to the run position. And you just hear the whole fuel system. It just reprimes everything real quick. And then I just did that three times on mine. I don't know if that's like what you're supposed to do, but that's what I did. And I just then turned it off. And then I did the same thing. Hit that until it went to the ACC position hit it one more time to the run position and you just hear the fuel just spray into the fuel filter areas to get it all primed up and once that was done just fire the truck up and everything was perfect now on the topic of things that i really really do like about this truck i love how quiet the interior is i love how smooth the ride is as four link and ram air which is like the extra bougie plush riding suspension for this thing no complaints with it it rides so so nice absolutely love it i love how quiet the truck is and i love how good the fuel mileage is on this thing and i know that it's newer doesn't have a lot of miles on it and so like the dpf and the whole exhaust system and the whole emission system over time might cause some problems and there are some upgrades and modifications you can do that keep your warranty intact to help reduce the problems that will happen over time with those emission systems but from my personal experience with this truck so far this thing has done great pretty much since i got it new even up until this past week for the most part other than how i just recently reset my fuel mileage for i don't know probably the last 30 40 miles and i did a lot of like 
idling around. We were sitting at an event, keeping the kids in the air conditioning and stuff like that. So I brought the average down. For the most part, if I'm just daily in and out of town and I'm like taking all these back roads and I'm only coasting 50, 55 miles an hour, sometimes 60, but for the most part, I'm not like in the gas all the time and stopping and going all the time. Around me for my driving conditions, about 20, one to 22 is my average if i'm on the highway cruising 65 to 70 ish and it is set which is a common common highway speeds around here for our area in ohio this thing will get all day long 23 and a half ish sometimes 24 if i'm closer to that 60 miles per hour range with the cruise set it does really really well obviously the harder you lay into the fuel if you're hauling a bunch of stuff towing all that's totally different but just in terms of those conditions, it does very, very well on fuel, which which is crazy because we have a CRV, a, a brand new Honda CRV, and that thing gets about 28. So it's crazy thinking diesel's the same price as gas right now. And this gigantic truck with you know a six cylinder, 375 horsepower turbo diesel is getting very, very close to the same mileage as our small turbocharged four cylinder Honda CRV, which is which is just nuts. But um it, that's what it gets and it's been very impressive and I've really loved it. Now in terms of towing conditions, I have made some videos picking up trucks and giving you guys kind of a small glimpse of what it gets towing. If I have an empty trailer, this thing will get about 15, 16 cruising 70 miles an hour. If I have like this small 14 foot trailer with an ATV on it with chemical sprayer on the back, let's say the total package combined trailer and ATV, everything combined is like 2,500 pounds, right? This thing gets like, again, around that 15, 16 number on the highway going about 70-ish with the cruise set. You take this thing and you throw a 22 foot trailer behind it with tandem dually axles and you throw a 7,000 pound pickup truck on the back of it. It'll get about 12 or 13 cruising going 70. Now that is not bad. And that's what I've actually averaged in this truck with all the emissions intact, cruise set, you know that's what i've gotten out of the thing now again it totally depends on driving conditions i don't have a lot of terrain that i'm towing on that's like steep elevation change in terms of when i'm on the highway or local back roads and stuff there's a lot of that but on the highways everything's fairly level there's no drastic differences in elevation and terrain change for most of the places i'm towing and it does really really well truck is effortlessly cruising 70 72 mile an hour with that load getting about anywhere from that 11 to 13 um, range. Just depends how heavy the load is and how it's centered on the trailer and stuff to make a small difference in fuel mileage. But for the most part, that's what I average. And I'm happy with that given the fact that the thing rides extremely nice and it does it without any hesitation. It does super well, which that's what it's made for, it's supposed to. But it does it really well and it does it in total comfort and style and I, could not be happier with how it does. Now, one last gripe I will have about this truck. We gotta add in just one more complaint, right? You gotta complain just a little bit. I rotated these not long ago. So I swapped, you know, different corners, front to rear. And these ones were on the rear, okay? This truck has 15,000 miles on it. And these tires are okay, but they're definitely below 50% tread now after 15,000 miles for the rear set. The front set, probably not much better probably sitting at like oh i don't know 60 ish maybe 60 percent tread on these tires and they have not been on the truck you know hardly 15,000 miles now like i said i have got quite a few towing miles on that rear set oh i mean on the whole set but the rear being on the back of the truck and i'm sure that's going to have some more wear and tear and more effect on the tires kind of a little bit of a bummer that i bet you by the time this truck's got 30 ish thousand miles on it maybe maybe even before that these tires are going to be shot they're going to have to be swapped out now right now they're fine for the most part they've just not held up the best compared to like my dad had a king ranch with michelins on it he got seventy thousand miles out of the set and they were not e they weren't even bald when he took them off they probably still had 30 40 percent tread i mean it was insane and he drives his truck probably about like how I drive mine, I'd, I'm not in the throttle heavy. I mean, I can't be if I'm getting, 
you know, an average of 21, 22 miles a gallon. You can't be flooring it everywhere and getting that kind of fuel mileage. For the most part, fairly forgiving on my truck, very easy on it. You know, for the tires to already be at about 50% tread on 15,000 miles, and I, and I drive it really easy, I couldn't imagine if I drove it like some people that I know, and they're like really hard on their truck, real hard accelerations everywhere they go. And, you know, these tires wouldn't last them 15,000 miles. They'd probably already be bald if it was, you know, too many other people that I can think of that are a lot harder on their vehicles than I am. Not a huge gripe, but it is just one of those small things that it's like, man, could you just put just a slightly better tire on this thing? I mean, like, come on. Firestones, overall, they're probably pretty good tires. But I know for a fact, several people that have had Michelins on their trucks and they have just lasted so much longer. I mean, every bit of 50, 60, sometimes 70,000 miles before they have to get a new set. But I just feel like when you're paying for a truck that, you know, I got a good deal on this truck, but for the everyday guy that's going out when these things were not selling for under sticker, they were selling at sticker or over, and you're paying 85, 95, $100,000 for a truck, for having tires that for a lot of guys, they're not gonna last them 20,000 miles on the truck, 25,000 miles. It's a little bit of a bummer when you pay that kind of money you're just kind of thinking come on can i at least can i at least get a set of tires that'll last me fifty thousand miles you know now if they were aftermarket and i just put a bad set of tires on it that's on me but when it's a brand new truck and that's what they came with just a little bit discouraging now i'm saying that like i'm really upset but in reality if i have to put a really cool set of all trains on this thing and keep it on the stock suspension and keep it on the stock wheels i'm not going to be totally upset but for the everyday guy that they want their tires to last as long as they can when they invest the money in a brand new truck, it's kind of like 50-ish thousand miles out of a set would be kind of nice. Now, obviously, not everybody can drive their truck the same way and you can't make a customer take care of their vehicle to where the tires are going to last longer and you can't make them rotate them. You can't make them do all these things. But it's like if I am rotating my wheels and tires front to back and crossing corners and stuff like that and I'm driving it easy, I'm getting great fuel miles out of the truck. I'm not hard on it other than some towing. It's like, I'm not the first one to say the tires on these things just don't last as long as some of the tires offered on some of the other new trucks. That's all I'm saying. And I'm pretty sure anybody that's watched this channel long enough knows I am not somebody to do burnouts and do crazy things to peel out the tires. Like, that's not what I do. I don't beat on my stuff. I take really good care of it. And so there's really nothing you can point at me other than I tow with it, which is what it's meant for. There's really nothing you can point at me and go, well, see, that's why your tires aren't lasting long. That's your own fault. Because I know for a fact when my dad had his King Ranch, he towed a lot of miles with a lot of heavier loads than what I'm hauling behind this thing. And, you know, even a buddy of his, a colleague of his had the same truck, you know, and he was, he had a set of tires on his truck. He got almost 60,000 miles out of it. And he was not easy on his tires and he's not easy on his truck, but they still lasted. So that's all I'm saying. I'm pampering the thing and I'm down to 50% tread on 15,000 miles on these things. It's just a little bit unfortunate that they couldn't last just a little bit longer. But overall conclusion on the truck, I have absolutely loved it. It's made no weird sounds. It hasn't had any weird problems other than the annoying seatbelt display thing and the slightly annoying update your U-Box and upgrade your whatever satellite, something or another thing that randomly pops up. But in terms of actual real problems, not really anything to truly complain about on the truck it, and it compensates in areas to make up for the small small inconveniences like those things like great fuel mileage a lot of these trucks they don't see 22 24 miles per gallon even if they were driving it even easier than i drive mine and they were going even slower and they were pampering it even more i mean they just some of them just cannot produce that kind of mileage um, with all the emission stuff intact this truck somehow does it and it's pretty much done it since i had it new with 15,000 miles on it now i know over time that might go away but so far i'm super happy with it interior quality drivability how quiet it is how easy it is to service and maintain other than the fuel hitting stuff and splashing everywhere and they don't offer any like easy solutions with the truck when you buy it new to just avoid making those extra messes overall you know they're not any it's nothing to really complain about much the truck's been great i've loved it every bit and I plan on keeping it for a very long time and I would definitely buy it again based on the current experiences that I've had with it. Now, if anything happens catastrophically that is not easy to be resolved with RAM, that's within warranty and everything else. I mean, that would be the only way that would push me the other way. But so far with all the RAM trucks and Dodge trucks that I've had over the years, everything that I've taken care of has lasted me. And I really don't understand how this truck wouldn't be able to be the exact same. 
situation. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully that helps you give a little insight on my one year review. Still great fuel mileage, still super comfortable, really no problems. And I would totally buy the truck again. Thanks so much, guys. I'll catch you in the next one.